Learning objectives include what is a primary and a secondary immune response, what is active and passive immunity, and uh, the last one is a summary of the immune response. This picture illustrates the primary and the secondary immune responses. As you can see, on this side of the axis is the antibody titers or antibody level, and here are the days in um, the time in days uh, from counted from the day of exposure to the antigen. Now, let's say that at this point, the body was exposed to an antigen or to an infection. If you trace the antibody levels here, they, there will be initially IgM production. And let me tell you one more thing that you should remember is that the lymphocytes, when they are created in the bone marrow, they always have IgM molecule on their surface. So when a lymphocyte gets selected by the antigen, it would induce in making or to making antibody, IgM antibody molecules. And there, there would be an increase in IgM response. But at the same time, there will be some cells that initially were secreting IgM molecules, but then they change to another form or another class of antibodies called IgG. And as you can see here, IgM um, does not reach the same level as IgG. So initially, IgG would be low in amount, but IgM would be more. And then after some time, like two, three weeks after it, there would be very low level left of IgM, but IgG would also, after peaking, would also start waning or disappearing. So if you expose the body again, at this point, close to the third week after the first exposure of the antigen, you would see there will be IgM response again, and these are lymphocytes that get again selected by this, this antigen here. But this level of antibodies, IgG, is, you see, this is IgG. It would be much more heightened, much more increased, and the reason is that this response is due to the memory cells that were created by the first exposure here. So, in other words, the cells that are making IgG, they would disappear, but because at this point here, there were memory cells generated, and those memory cells, they, at the second exposure, would start making immediately, very aggressively, more antibodies, and that's the reason the secondary immune response is always has more level and is more aggressive. And this is also the reason that uh, multiple vaccines are done to protect the uh, individual. Like you see these uh, babies are given multiple shots of various, um, various vaccines in order to boost the immune response so that it can help the body dealing with the infection. So this is a typically uh, primary and a secondary immune response profile. Primary immune response is always low, but secondary immune response is always high. Adaptive immunity could be described into naturally acquired or artificially acquired. Naturally acquired is basically like we are exposed to the antigen and get those antibodies naturally as a, as a result. For example, if somebody is exposed to an infection, and he recovers from that infection. Body would have immunity, and this is called active immunity because the, the immunity was generated by the body itself, actively. So this is called active, natural, and active because naturally he was exposed to the antigen, to the infection. There is a passive uh, part of this naturally acquired immunity also, and that is like uh, the baby, um, when is developing inside the uterus, uh, antibodies of the, the dam of the mother can cross placenta or when the baby is born and given the first milk, which we call colostrum. Colostrum has lots of antibodies, and those antibodies actually uh, are absorbed through the gut and become part of the body. And because these antibodies 
were passively acquired. They were not made by the fetus or by the baby. They were made by the, by the mother, but he or she acquired by the milk or they were transferred through the placenta. They are passive part or passive immunity. Artificially acquired immunity, basically when you expose the body, the body does not get infected naturally. You inject the body with the vaccine, for example, and that is an artif artificial way of creating natural antibodies. So this is active because when you inject the, the antigen artificially, like in the form of vaccine, body responds to that antigen and make actively antibodies. Similarly, if somebody is very sick, or let's say somebody has been bitten by a snake, and those snake venoms are very deadly, they will kill the person in like maybe a few hours. And to save such a patient, preformed antibodies are given to these patients. And this is called a passive phenomenon because antibodies were made by somebody else. And he acquired, the person who got bitten by, by the snake, acquired these antibodies preformed somewhere. This is also a passive process. But because the whole phenomenon is artificially acquired, and that is the reason. So there are two subclasses or ways of classifying these antibodies, uh, naturally acquired and artificially acquired, and both have active and passive uh, part, and similarly active and passive part here. Now, this is a, a summary of the humoral immune response. As you can see, that this is the antigen that has antigenic epitope, and one of this epitope would select a, a lymphocyte with its specificity, which would be ultimately uh, transformed into clone and then with the help of uh, T helper cells would start making uh, antibodies. And some of these cells would become memory cells and some would start making antibodies. If you look at the cellular part of the immunity, it is much, much like the humoral part. Uh, this is... The, the cell that has been infected by a virus, it is important to know that antibodies cannot chase the antigen or the virus that has gone inside the cell. So that is the reason, this is the fourth line of defense, that these T cells, they can kill uh, the cell that is harboring the virus inside. So antibody molecules cannot chase the virus inside the cell, but T lymphocytes has the ability to bind to such an inf virally infected cell and destroy this completely. So there would be a complete destruction. So this is one, one uh, consequence of this meeting with the T lymphocyte, that T lymphocyte has the ability to trigger, a sig to give out a signal that causes the, the lysis of the, the cell, its own cells, body cells. And that is the reason it is called cellular immunity because there are no antibody molecules involved here. Cell is directly cytotoxic for a virally infected cell. And this is the reason we call it cellular immunity. And, but there are other consequences of, of this meeting also that these T cells could act as helper cells also. They, uh, although they differ, the, the cell that damaged this cell, like the target cell, it is CD8 positive. There is a molecule called CD8 that is present on such cells, on such T cells that destroy virally infected cells. And there is a difference in the helper T cells in terms of the CD uh, molecule. This is called a CD4 molecule. So those helper T cells, they always have CD4 molecules on the surface. Uh, and they can secrete cytokines that can activate other cells of the immune system. And these cytokines, they can also act on to B cells, making good antibodies. And as we saw in the humoral immunity, that there, are, there is a memory cell. Uh, the T cells also have a memory cells. So some cells would become memory cells, and others uh, would be effector cells that they could uh, right away kill the target. And these memory cells, at the second exposure, they would again be very aggressively uh, proliferating into, again, memory cells and effector cells. So memory cells would just sit down there calmly waiting for a, another exposure to happen, and target cells would be killed by the effector cells. So this, in summary, both 
humoral immune response and cellular immune response, the mechanisms are almost the same. B lymphocytes would make antibodies, which we call humoral immunity, and T lymphocytes do not secrete other than these cytokines anything. They are directly cytotoxic or they can help other cells through their cytokine production. Another molecule, which I mentioned earlier, is called MHC molecule. It is very important to know the distribution of these molecules on the surface of the cells. MHC class 1, which is called MHC 1, it is present on all nucleated cells. All nucleated cells have uh, this molecule on the, their surface. MHC class 2 molecules are very special because only few cells have them. And those that have them, they are called antigen-presenting cells. In summary, primary and secondary immune responses are different. Primary is always low-profile response. Secondary and tertiary or subsequent responses are always very aggressive responses, whether that is T-cell immunity or B-cell immunity. And uh, this observations that Second exposure is always aggressive uh, or results in aggressive antibody production or aggressive immunity is the basis for a vaccine um, injection or vaccination uh, in individuals, in the population. Thank you.